How much can you borrow on a buy to let mortgage and how much deposit do you need? My name is Anthony from Bolt Mortgages and if you want to find out more details about the buy to let process and how buy to let mortgages work, press like and subscribe now. If you're really excited about investing in property, generating a passive income and also looking for capital appreciation, you're really going to want to find out how to get yourself prepared financially and what needs to be done to make the process a lot more easier when you do find a property. First of all, talking about how much you can borrow. The way buy to let investments work completely different to your standard residential mortgages is with your residential, they want to work everything out based on your own personal affordability. How much you can borrow, such as your 4.5 to 5.5 times your salary, whereas buy to lets work slightly different. The way the lenders calculate the maximum amount you can borrow when you're looking at buying a buy to let, it's all based on the rental income. So whether you're buying it for a limited company, you're a higher rate or lower rate taxpayer, they have different calculations to figure out how much the rental income needs to be for them to be able to lend you the money that you need. That being said, some lenders do need a minimum income criteria. Some of them have no minimum income criteria, and some of them want to make sure you've got at least 25,000 to 30,000 pound salary. So if there are any rental voids or you're struggling to get tenants, you can still make the monthly payments yourself. When it comes down to your deposit, this varies massively depending on every lender. And exactly the same with your standard residential mortgages. The bigger deposit you've got, the cheaper the interest rates tend to be. There are lenders out there that will allow you to get buy to let mortgages with a li as little as 15% deposit. But one of the big drawbacks in that is that their interest rates seems to be substantially higher, meaning that your cash flow on a month to month basis may not be as profitable if you put down a bigger deposit. As soon as you get down to your 25% deposit, it opens the market up to the vast majority of lenders, meaning it's more competitive and you've got more options to look at when you're looking at negotiating better deals. It's worth noting as well that if you've got bad credit, you may need a bigger deposit when you're getting a buy to let property and although there's a massive misconception that you need to own your own property as a residential before you can buy buy to lets that's not 100% correct although it does limit your options if you are a first-time buyer looking at investing in property there are some lenders out there that will allow you to invest in property but they will assess it still based on your personal income as well as making sure that the rental income criteria matches as well so for example if you want to borrow 150,000 they would still use the standard income multiple that they would use your income times up by 4.5 to make sure that you can afford the mortgage on your own and also if they want to make sure the rental income still stacks up so you can still buy a buyer to let as a first-time buyer but there's just a couple of extra loops you need to jump through to get qualified by the lender so in conclusion the amount you can borrow on a buyer to let mortgage all comes down to the rental income from the property how much of a deposit that you've got and also if you're a first-time buyer it can also come down to your own personal income if you want to find out more details about how to generate passive income from property, don't forget to press the like and subscribe button now.